Hi there, we're back again at Langston Harbour and this time we're going to be collecting some oysters for some chemical analysis. Behind me is the old oyster house and if I turn around this way in the in the back which is in the northerly direction um, that's where Bud's Farm Sewage Treatment Plant is and over the weekend it has been discharging many many hours worth of the city of Portsmouth's waste just into the sea around me which is a highly protected reserve site of special scientific interest special area of conservation Ramsar site for all the protected birds that are around here at the moment and what our concerns are that all the chemicals and the waste that comes out of that sewage treatment plant are, are harming the wildlife here and there is wildlife here um, but whether there, there would be more or whether it would be diverse is, is a question that we're trying trying to answer at the moment um, so we're going to be collecting a range of specimens uh, which we will then analyse um, to see what chemicals are, are built up inside them. And these chemicals could be oils, um, they could be pharmaceuticals, the, the drugs that we take, um, whether it be the prescribed drugs or, or the illegal drugs. Um, it would be the cleaning agents that we use um, in our everyday household products, the shampoos, the shower gels, the moisturising creams, the suntan lotions, anything that goes down our drains uh, goes to sewage treatment plants. And it doesn't always get fully broken down there, but when stormwater overflows are activated, uh, they get um, jettisoned out without going through the sewage treatment plant and just come out completely untreated in, into our environment. And, and that's where they cause harm. And, and that's um, not mentioning all those pathogens and bacteria that we have in our feces, which come out uh, in this area where is used quite heavily recreationally um, all year round by sailors, wild swimmers, paddle boarders. Um, so there, there is obviously an increased likelihood that they could get ill from uh, all this waste that's coming out as well. So I've finished my sampling now at the old oyster house. Um, we've got, got some oysters. We've got some limpets. Now, these two species are quite useful because they're, they stay put, they're sedentary organisms. So, um, what you find in them is representative of where you collected them from because they live for a very long time and obviously they're, they're not mobile um, whereas a, a fish or something might swim around so when you t collect a fish if it's one that's been quite mobile and gone to lots of different places you're not entirely sure whether the organism the, the chemicals it's picked up in its body are, are representative of where you collected it from or maybe where it, where it's been been before in it, its life for instance but um, we'll take them back to the lab and we'll get them prepped and uh, hopefully a little bit longer down the line we'll know all the different chemicals um, and some of these chemicals will be ones which have been banned some things are, are kind of on, on watch lists European watch lists for we know that they're harmful to us and we know that they're harmful to the environment uh, but we're still using them in our everyday products and they're not getting broken down and they're getting um, sent out into the environment so it means that our our coastal environments are not as thriving as much as they should be they're not um, the fisheries aren't doing so well those juvenile fish and, and all the things that they feed on if there's less of them then it sort of has its ramifications up the food chain and then it has economic implications as well we we uh, thrive and survive off our coastal habitats they provide us food they provide us uh, uh, areas for um, improving our mental well-being just uh, blue spaces for where we can just enjoy relax and do recreational activities so um, if the if the, the habitat is being harmed then um, it has an impact on us as well just behind me in the background we've got a cormorant an egret and, and a heron and they're just in this pool as the tides going out and the, the fish are getting trapped and they're having an absolute feast down there but what they're feasting on is fish that have sort of grown up in this harbour and we just don't know whether they're full of chemicals and then they pass those chemicals up the food chain and then it might be having sort of impacts on, on those birds, on their reproduction, whether they develop cancer later on in life, whether their babies develop deformities and um, and this is part of the research that we're trying to do at the moment is, is just to see what are the impact Behind me over here in the distance, you can hear the kind of roar of the M27. So there'll be thousands and thousands of cars going along that every day. 
and today's raining so um, the runoff from that road and all the hydrocarbons that the chemicals that go into the rubber tires and things will just be washing into this environment and we know that some of those chemicals are really quite quite nasty and uh, they won't be doing the wildlife here any good now we've arrived at uh, Bud's Farm sewage treatment plant you can see the tides way out in the distance and it's kind of in that direction back there where I was earlier at the, uh, the old oyster house collecting the oysters. Um, we're we're going to be collecting some more samples right the way along the pipe now because as, as the water goes out of that pipe um, on the outgoing tide it sort of goes in a southerly direction uh, but when the tide comes back in we know it splits and it goes in both an easterly and a westerly direction so it's, it heads under Hailing Bridge over there. But underneath all this seaweed here and along the edge of that pipe There'll be a variety of organisms which I'm going to be collecting. I'm going to be collecting little amphipods which are underneath the seaweed just below me. We know that they've got quite low sperm counts in this area and we're not quite sure the reason why. Uh, we're going to be collecting some snails, some little crabs, um, some little samples of seaweed and maybe we'll, we'll get two different species of seaweed as well because that's what some of the snails and some of the, the crustaceans eat. Uh, out in the distance you can see somewhere around here there is a uh, there's about four or five bait diggers out there so there are obviously some creatures that do quite well of all the all the feces that comes out of that pipe because there's tons and tons of nutrients in it so um yeah it might be that uh, some species do quite well with the nutrients but what you find is as you go as a gradient away from a pollution source um, there'd be one species that dominate that can cope with those conditions but there won't be a, a large variety of different species but then as you go further and further away that dominant species declines and then you get this greater abundance of different species that fill lots of different niches within the mud inside the mud and on top of the mud and it's those which are critically important for the the wildlife around here because all the different bird species that live around here will be will be feeding on different sized food and there'll be some will be collecting on the surface of the sand and the mud and some will be collecting it deep down and um and the same applies for all the fish and obviously this is an important nursery site for the fish as well um, so if you just have one species dominating in the, in the mud because of the pollution and it's the only one that can cope with it then you don't get very many other species because uh, there's not much food availability so anyway I'm gonna head off now and go and collect some of my samples and I'll show you some in the bucket a bit later right we're right down near the the end of the pipe now and uh, if we just come down and have a look down on the ground just here you start to see some sort of evidence that the things that come out of this pipe I'll walk you over these are the animals I've collected so far so I've got um, a load of little amphipod shrimp which feed off the seaweed around here um, but we know they've got low sperm counts in this harbour um, really low and we just don't know what the cause is it might be oh yeah there's more, more sanitary products on the ground here it might be because this pipe here gets rid of the waste um, of over 400,000 people and um, when it rains it doesn't treat it at all so that, there's a sewage treatment plant there called Bud's Farm just behind me behind those bushes and when it rains it can't cope with that rainfall uh, so it comes out completely untreated from this pipe and it comes out in, in millions and millions of litres so you can see that murky pool there you know, literally and it was just over the last couple of days the entire waste of the city and the surrounding area would have been pouring out here absolutely gushing with all the feces all the things that we put down our toilet all the things that come off road drains there'll be pesticides in there there'll be illegal chemicals like cocaine there'll be pharmaceuticals shampoos um, anything like paints and terps and all those things that people we know put down their sinks and, and probably shouldn't be putting down their sinks um, and it'll just just come out here so a lot of these chemicals will be just bioaccumulating through the food chain and uh, you never know there's a there's a seal population right behind me um, there's gray seals and, and common seals there they might be suffering you might not see the evidence of it uh, they might be sort of developing tumors inside them that just only sort of manifest themselves until they get a lot older so it's a bit like smoking with humans um, you kind of it doesn't kill you straight away if you have a couple of cigarettes but if you smoke all your life then you're going to shorten your, your lifespan considerably and, and develop all sorts of um, problems with your health in later life 